Kurugiri is the key to victory, Spinner loses his mind, and Meizo Shoji finally unveils his face to the world. Let's talk about all of this and more as we dive right into the newest chapter of My Hero Academia. So My Hero Academia Chapter 370 is finally out, and with it, the story takes a step away from the main action and focuses up on the smaller side characters, such as Koda, Spinner, and Shoji. Because you can't just have a war with one battle, you gotta get through all the fodder first. But before I begin talking about this chapter, don't forget to Detroit smash that like button and slide on that subscribe button's DMs to hit that notification bell. And now, without further ado, let's jump right into My Hero Academia Chapter 370, titled History. This chapter opens up with a flashback to a small rural village in Japan, where we see the local residents throwing rocks at a silhouetted figure, exclaiming how despicable it is that there is a mutant type quirk in their village. The villagers then demand that the person leave with their tainted blood that has forever stained their land. And they also mention that no matter how much society changes, they will never accept a mutant like them back into the village. So yeah, just straight up racism going on in the My Hero world. Or I guess in this case you could call it a quirkism? But following this, the story cuts back to the present. This time to Central Hospital, where the narration informs us that All For One sent Spinner and his troops to the hospital in an attempt to free Kurugiri, who is considered to be the high-end Nomu closest to being perfect. The narration also reveals that not only is Spinner marching on Central Hospital with his troops, but he is also accompanied by dozens of mutant-type quirks civilians, who are sick of being discriminated against and believe that the League will bring the equality to the world that the modern society has failed to all these years. And as we see this image of an insane amount of people marching into the hospital, it's revealed that the villains have rounded up roughly 1,500 troops in this attack, who are getting the upper hand against a measly 200 policemen and heroes who are left to defend the hospital. That's right, in this fight, the villains outnumber the heroes 75 to 1. That's a lot of villains. Amongst the heroes defending the hospital, we see Present Mike, who tries to use his wide range quirk for crowd control. However, the sheer number of enemies proves too much for even him, as they perform a fierce counterattack for which Present Mike is only able to avoid, thanks to everyone's favorite mountain head, Koda, who commands some nearby birds to fly in and carry the hero out of danger. This moment of safety is short-lived, however, as immediately after this, we see just how overwhelmed the heroes are, and how terrifying this massive crowd is as they take down multiple heroes, one of which we see is Rocklock, and they pin down Koda himself, who, once they realize is also not normal looking, I think that's the best way to put it, call him out for being a traitor and claim that he is city scum. It's also important to note that it appears as though initially the civilians in this attack aren't actually going out to kill the heroes. It seems as though they're just trying to pin them down and restrain them. Although I say initially because there's also definitely a lot in there going for the kill. As the Battle of the Central Hospital rages on and carnage ensues, we see standing atop a building a hooded figure, calling out to his mutant brethren, exclaiming that Hero Society's regulation and education on quirks is is nothing more than a means of oppression on mutant kind, and that today is finally the day for liberation, claiming it to be Order 66, the Great Jedi Purge. Which I mean is a cool Star Wars reference and all, but come on, should this not be the first sign to the mutants that them being the ones executing Order 66 means they probably aren't the good guys in this fight? But anyway, the masked speaker then goes on to say that people have always discriminated against those that look different. Different. And although there are those that claim society has changed and progress has been made, this is only true in the big cities. If you were to take even a single step outside of the city, you would be met with terrible racism. The mass speaker then finishes up this speech by removing his mask, revealing his mantis-like face, as he declares that it's time for the mutants to step out from the shadows and to make their own light. They will no longer follow the heroes, but instead they will follow the one person who will lead them to the world they so crave. That person being Spinner. We then get our first look at the new grueling, drooling monstrosity that is Spinner. 
As we quickly learn, thanks to the new power All For One gave him, Spinner barely has a mind of his own, noting how every second he feels his mind going blank. So Spinner decides that the best course of action is to just follow his orders, as he raises his sword of blades and exclaims to his followers, take Kurugiri back. It's actually quite interesting to see Spinner like this, considering Spinner was following Shigaraki and has been shown to be a bit skeptical of All For One, it makes sense that All For One would attempt to dumb Spinner down like this. But it also seems like he has turned Spinner into the somewhat new, albeit weaker, Gigantamachia for Shigaraki. Gigantamachia will do anything for All For One, and Spinner would do anything for Shigi. But this aside, as Spinner raises his sword to kill some heroes in front of him, he's intercepted by none other than Shoji, who uses his super move, Octo Blow, on Spinner to knock him backward. But as expected, this interception is only brief, as Shoji is quickly overwhelmed and shoved to the ground by the massive crowd. While being pinned down by the mutants, Shoji begins to speak up, questioning the mutants' motives, asking what does attacking a hospital do for their cause? He then goes on to say that in Jakku, the very heroes the mutants want to get rid of are the same people who evacuated hospitals and civilians and made sure every innocent person was safe before they they began their attack on the villains, and he asks the villains if they have even thought of doing that themselves. There is then a brief cut in the story where it's revealed that the mutant being ostracized from the village at the very start of this chapter was none other than Shoji himself. And with this, chapter 370 comes to an end, as Shoji uses his arms to break free from the mob's grasp, losing his face covering in the process as he screams out, if all of you haven't thought of protecting those innocence first, then I will never forgive you, as we are greeted with the first official look at Shoji's full face. And I gotta say, I've seen worse. Overall, this chapter was a bit of a surprise. To be honest, I find it a bit strange showing us the side characters now, after the past few chapters, whose sole focus was not only on the main characters, but the most important event in the My Hero story. The timing is most certainly a strange one. That being said, I am glad they're finally addressing Shoji and, well, I guess, his face. His backstory has to be the least known out of all of the heroes in Class 1A, so it's great to see his side of life. Just very strange timing. But let me know what you think of this chapter. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and comment what you think is going to happen next. For more My Hero content, subscribe to the Lunchtime Crew. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Plus Ultra.